hey, what's going on? It's John Stewart here, Alamo City Cello. And uh, this is my ongoing quest to amplify the cello in the most natural and honest way possible. Uh, the new cello that I'm working with right now, it's a beautiful instrument, Chinese instrument. And uh, I did replace the bridge on this and put Ava Parazzi on. A good setup on a cello is so important. You know, playability uh, matters a lot. So if the bridge is too high, it just wears your fingers out right. So it's got to be cut right. Uh, a lot of the modern cellos that are coming out, they're doing a wonderful job on the instrument themselves. Sometimes they need some finishing work. So another thing is a, a tail piece that has built-in, um, you know, fine tuners, things like that. But this one is interesting in another way because it has a qu quarter inch jack installed here. And that terminates into a piazzo pickup that's on the back plate towards the middle near the sound post. Now, I want to show you the rest of the gear here because this is my outdoor rig. This is what I'm running outdoors. First of all, very important, a preamp. Now, I've had about four or five preamps in my life. So I've had Grace, I've had uh, Art, uh, I've had um, you know, uh, Behringer, so different, different things. This gets the job done really well, and, and it does what it needs to do. You have EQ options. And uh, it's gig worthy, road worthy. Um, highly recommend this. If 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 you know if you have a pickup and this, and you're running into the house sound of a, of a club, this will definitely get the job done. So highly recommend it. Patch cord, keep it small, right? Quality cables do matter. Now, folks, here's something you probably haven't seen before, but it it's I I I highly recommend this next piece of equipment. And here it is. What this is, is a Roland bass amp. Now this one's been modified by me for in, a, in a couple of important ways. First of all, a high, a high pass filter has been installed in it so that the top end is just unaffected. Really, it's the mids and the bass that I'm looking to thicken up. But I'll tell you what, folks, this off the shelf at 200 under $250 American is the best money you're gonna spend on amplification. Now, why do I say that? Number one, it sounds good. Number two, it's portable, right? And number three, it gives you all the control. This sits behind my cello. It comes from one direction, one direction from the sound. I don't like it, it's, it's, you know, it's coming from here and there. It's disconcerting, where do I listen, right? Have it come from one area, that's my, that's my philosophy. Uh, we're going to rig this up and listen to this new cello that I have with and without amplification. So the audio chain is first this. I love that sound. I got to do that again. Isn't that satisfying? And folks, this is the only place, the, the best place to put a, a hole if you're going to drill a hole for permanent installation. And why do you want permanent installation? If you've got something stuck to the back plate of your cello, it's going to fall off at the worst possible times. And no, it, it just is. Or you're going to forget it and you're, you're not going to have it later on. This is always there and ready to go. And it doesn't affect your acoustic sound one iota. It's on the back plate, my friend. All right, so then that goes into this. Let me see if that's my wife. Pleasanton, Texas. All right, we'll see who's calling me from Pleasanton. Hello? Oh, mysterious. They hung up. Pleasanton. That's south of San Antonio. Actually, I've got relatives in Pleasanton. That's why I picked up. Um, I'm not going to get into family tree stuff. It's kind of boring. Anyways. It's not boring, but it's just, why are you interested in that? Why am I even talking about this? Hello? Anyways, this goes into your preamp. The input of your pre. There it is. LR bags, please label this stuff better. I mean, I'm still getting confused. At what point am I going to get this right off the bat? Little patch cable. I have to complain about something. I'm never completely satisfied. I think a lot of people are that way, right? You want more. You just want more. I want more tone. I want more beauty. I just want more. It's what it is. So we're going to turn it down, turn the gain down just a little bit on this, and here's the sound of just the cello. Here's the cello, the natural sound of the cello. And 
Pierce with amplification. <laughs> Let's change. Let's let's change some of the pri uh, parameters here. So let's say you have this sound. And I want just a little bit more treble and present. So a little bit more on the top end. How about more bass, more mids, and less treble and presence? How does this sound? Can get let you know it's you're hearing a little bit of feedback in the mic. When you get feedback, this can be controlled with this uh, uh, with the preamp. too much bass. That's another thing that will cause distortion is a lot of bass. So, so less bass and less low mid. But you know, I kind of like the low mids. I kind of like them. Less, mo less mids, low mids. More. More cowbell. We want more. I got a fever for the cowbell. We want it there, man. challenges of playing with a piazza pickup I found is the ring. Sometimes the ring is a little unnatural. So if you're playing like, say, for example, um, the prelude to the first suite. You're I have to control much more with the bow how much bass you're hearing. So I adjust with the bow. This is the ultimate volume control machine on the cello. You control the volume with the bow. But this does its part too, right? So um, I'm forever just messing around with this. You know, at some point, and this is a very important point, at some point it's not about the gear. At some point you got to be kind of say, okay, this is my palette, this is my frame, this is what I got to work with, this is my canvas. And get busy making great music, right? So. I don't want to be, seriously, I don't want to be that guy that's constantly talking about the equipment that never makes the music. So the music has got to come first. It's got to come first. But let me tell you, folks, there are times where you're making the music. Like I was playing Brahms E minor sonata with, with a friend, and I, I couldn't hear what I was doing. He couldn't hear what I was doing. It, it, it just didn't work. This rig made it work. I was able to make it work with this rig. And I took it in with piano. If you're playing piano trios, if you're playing Schumann concerto, if you're playing where you, a place where you just need a little bit of power, but you want control over that sound, you don't want a sound guy deciding it. You want to decide this. You. And it's tucked away behind your cello. It's coming from one source. It's simple. It sounds good. You know, you can, you can take it to the gig. If, you, if you're playing outdoors, in 10 years time, folks, in 10 years time, Pickups and cello will be as common as they are for acoustic classical guitars. You know, do you know an acoustic classical guitarist that doesn't have an instrument with, with a pickup in it? They're hard to find, right? They have some form of amplification. They do. 
They could use a combination. We need to learn from our guitar brethren out there because they've been doing this a long time. We can nick everything from them. God bless the guitarists. Don't we love them? Guitarists and violinists, I mean, you know, I get along with them both. I know fiddle players can reach prima donnas, but Jesus, anybody that's doing that, anybody that's playing the violin and dedicates themselves, I mean, I just automatically have respect for that. All right, you guys take care. Adios.